Hello everyone. The focus of this uh, piece of footage is going to be positioning and um, having a proper lineup for your for your fleet and why why it can be so important. Um, but before I get into all of that, uh, just to set up the engagement, this happens in S U. It's a entry system. Well, not an entry system, but it's the first system in the dead end constellation in the region of the syndicate. Um, Dead end, uh, dead end pockets, um, I guess, characteristically for Roman gangs, can sometimes be dangerous because you can go in and um, by the time you're done looking for targets and whatnot, you might find that the residents have decided to camp you in. So it's just something you should be aware of uh, when roaming to dead end, uh, dead end constellations and, and systems and areas like that. But um, on with the engagement. What we have is a tornado, a tengu, and two drakes. Um, two drakes pretty good for uh, anti-support because uh, our drakes have a couple webs on them and the uh, Tengu is just generally all around good ship uh, along with the drakes can project damage and um, has a web as well so it has a sort of a little bit of utility there. Tornado's uh, much weaker than both those ships in terms of tank but uh, it can project damage um, much better than both ships and I guess has higher damage output than both of them, than both the Tengu and the Drake as well. So we have the Tengu, Tornado, and a couple of Drakes. And we jump into S-U, we notice uh, locals fairly high, and there are a bunch of ships that we find at a player-owned customs office. It seems that they're shooting it, um, trying to uh, claim it for themselves. So what we're going to do is we're just going to warp to them at range. Um, it's a the, their gang is maybe about 15 people. It grows to grows. It changes as the fight goes, but it's around 15 to 20 people most of the time. It consists of mostly uh, tier three BCs at the start. Um, one guardian, uh, get in a few random ships, a couple cinnables, and uh, it's, it's yeah, it's mostly BC fleet, but there's a mix of other ships in there as well. Um, we go in at about 70 um, from the uh, customs office, and we're, we're you know expecting them to just fight back because we were only four people and they have about 15 people or so on grid. So they actually warp off as we come in, uh, and that sort of surprises us. Uh, and here's part of the first mistake that we make: that sort of. Uh, comes back to uh, really mess us up later on. So I'm about to call on a line out um, as we come in because I'm ready for them to you know sort of engage and you know just set up and I'm letting people know where we're going to line out to. But as they warp off, um, I just stop mid sentence and you know quickly try to tell people to spread points and call the targets I want points spread on. Uh, we we're only able to point on Armageddon, but that's that's totally fine because they have a lot more and once they realize we're just four. They'll probably, um, you know, come back. It seems like they they have an FC because you know, um, as soon as we come in, they weren't expecting it. So, in in some situations, the best thing to do is just to regroup and then come back. And then you know, once you you're you come back, you're ready, you're organized, you can come back and engage um, the hostiles that have appeared, which are which are us. And um, rather than just sort of disorganized jumping. I'd be just rolling with the fight as it happened. It, it, was, it was a pretty good decision by them, I guess, to warp off and regroup. But we have a, we have an Armageddon, and this more or less guarantees that uh, we'll be able to bring them back since they they, they still have people on grid, and, and even the getting can tell them, hey, it's just a few people. It's not that bad. You can come back. Um, we're planning to put the Geddon in low armor, or sorry, yeah, low armor, just so we can kill it when we pick them up on scan again. Um, the get in uh, correctly uh, shoots our tornado, weakest ship, and does the most damage. So he forces me to burn away as we're shooting him. <coughs> and as I'm burning away and he's entering um, structure, the uh, enemy gang uh, comes back on scan, and we have to be sort of ready to fight. But we haven't even called an align out or anything, and since I'm sort of in a um, a situation where I'm trying to manage my ship uh, more than you know manage the the fleet. Um, I, I I just slips my mind and I don't call a, a proper line out 
and we're not really grouped together. We sort of have an idea of you know where we want to go, but we it's it's not confirmed or anything. So we end up being sort of all over the place in the fight, and, and that's uh, that's really bad. You don't want to do that. Um, as far as uh, I'm pause, I guess for a second. As far as calling an align out, it's usually good to have one that you know leads you away from the targets and one that has multiple celestials in that direction. That's often why the sun is called as an align out. Um, it's not necessarily the sun that you're expected to warp to. Sun is kind of obvious, but when the sun is called as an align out, um, when we do it, what we're, we're we have in mind is the celestials around the sun, so that if you're chased, you can pick any one, and it's hard for people to know which one exactly you've warped to because they're sort of all on top of each other. So if you're in a position to call an align out um, anywhere in system, usually the sun is you know the default one, mostly because there's probably loads of celestials there that you can pick from, and it'll be hard for people to follow you. Unless you do want them to follow you, then you you know pick one off the sun that's easy to see people warping out at. Depends on what you're doing. So that's one thing to note. And the other thing is it's also good to call in a line out that's not too far away. If it's sort of like a rolling fight, you don't have logistics and people are going to be coming in and out, just warping off to break lock and regenerate a little bit of cap, or some mods, and maybe some shields as well. So in that case, you want to call an a line out that's uh, close. You don't want them to be warping... 40 EU and then warping back for another 40 EU, it'll just take them ages to come get back to the fight, and it might turn out really badly by the time they do the warp back, but within that 40 EU the situation might have changed and people might be right on top of where they land and it could just turn out badly. So you want to cl try to call um, line outs and warp outs that are, are close, and as well if you can, ones that have lots of, uh, lots of celestials so that if it's your intention that you don't want to be followed, that you can just warp to one and people won't really know which one you've gone to, and they'll just have to guess. But uh, we don't do that, and so in my mind I have the gate that we came from as an align out, usually just the way you came from going back there is, is usually not too bad of a choice if you're coming at range because it takes you directly away from them. So in my mind that was the line out. Um, it seems other people had different ideas and we weren't really all on the same page and that really affects um, how, how this fight turns out. But um, we're taking this Armageddon down, they're all on close range scan, uh, they land and we finish off the Armageddon, he's in structure, he's almost down and we can pretty safely kill him. Um, the next target is the Oracle, which is pretty weak and can project damage just as well as the Skedden, so it's really dangerous. We're all shield tanking, it does EN thermal damage, and we're not we're not all Minotaur resist or anything like that. So it'll do pretty decent damage to all of us. So it's the next target. However that changes because he's he's sort of stationary, he's not moving. And we have other things that are sort of more dangerous that are burning for us. So we gotta switch. In fact I even just like burn out of lock range. So I'm not in lock range, he's not in lock range either, so he can't do anything. Instead, we have a Cinnable burning for us, um, so that's that's the uh, next thing we go for. Um, it can die pretty quickly. I, ha I have the wrong ammo loaded. I should have had EMP, but in in some cases, it's it's better just to shoot what you're having rather than spend uh, ten seconds reloading, um, because uh, it just sometimes just takes too long. And in this case, the barrage I had loaded helps me kill the hound um, really quickly and uh, reduces that, takes out that damage um, very quickly. If I had EMP, I probably wouldn't be hitting him at the range I was. And here I'm just like sort of going off towards the gate all by myself. Everyone else is in a different direction, and they're chasing the other people, so I've pulled completely out of range of everyone else. And this is, this is not good, because I'm sort of calling targets, and I'm calling targets close to me, which are bad for everyone else, because the targets close to me aren't, aren't really necessarily the best targets for everyone else to be shooting. So I try to adjust, I recognize that I'm not in a really good position, I try to adjust and I burn back up towards them, but I'm still, you know, sort of separated from them. Um, the Cinnables are still our targets, and uh, the Cinnable, I think, that we primary eventually goes down, the Drakes are still, the Drakes and Tinkers are still close to him, and after he goes down, the second Cinnable's moving away, so they're, they're cycling as well, they're moving in and out as they feel, like, safe and, you know, uh, aggressive, and then they decide to be less aggressive, so we're having to switch targets, um, uh, constantly as well. 
the frigates are a really big threat, especially since we're not close together, but they're being really sort of cagey and they're not committing, they're sort of kind of coming in and then moving back away. So we just have to be aware of them, we can't just deal with them right away because, you know, they're not really at range and we don't have them tackled. So we, we j just have to shoot what we can that we can, you know, ensure that we can kill. Even though we'd rather probably be going for frigates, we, they're not really in position for us to shoot them. So we go for the Sanaga instead. Um, we take him down. Um, one of us is being forced to warp off. He comes, he warps off to a close spot and then he's going to come back later on. Our Tengu is, is moving closer to the rest of us, um, trying to maintain point on the Naga, while the rest of us are sort of kiting from max distance. And uh, after the Naga, the next closest thing to us is this, uh, is this Daimos. So we've, we've sort of separated them. We're, we're in a really good position right now. We're moving closer to each other, but we're not really confirming um, a direction that we all need to burn to still. Uh, because we you know, feel it's like it's it's an okay position right now. We haven't really corrected any of our mistakes, so we're all sort of still doing our own thing in terms of where we're moving. Generally, same direction, but not exactly the same direction. Um, we're shooting this Dimos. Our Drake comes back in at range um, in case the situation changed too much and he puts him in a bad position. It becomes a zero. But we finish off the Dimos. Um, notice that there's some tornadoes and other things. And I inquire whether the uh, tornado is doing damage to the Tengu, or if it's able to mitigate most of the damage uh, just by, uh, you know, uh, maintaining some high transversal with his afterburner. I can see from the watch list that he's the one taking damage, so um, I can ask him about the tornado because it's one that we can kill much more quickly than the symbols, and it's at a similar range. But he says he's fine, so the symbols are burning, and we decide to go for those instead. Um, there's a couple symbols, we just pick one, there's not really too much to that decision. Um, I guess uh, it had a little bit of shield damage. So we shoot it, and actually the second symbol um, would have been better because it's uh, it's burning towards us, and the first one we primary it actually just leaves. Um, at the same time, there's uh, a couple frigates who have sort of snuck up while we're worried about these other targets, and a falcon as well on grid, and I'm separated, moving towards the gate, and everyone else is moving in a different direction. I'm jammed, I can't do anything about this fire tail. He's going to tackle me. I was aligned, but not completely, and I get scrammed just before I'm just before I'm able to warp. And because of the distances and us constantly burning in their slower ships, a lot of them are in range to warp to me. So they do. And my my uh my gangmates aren't in a position to support me really. So we, we sort of both mess up and, you know, um, we should have noticed that um, any any of us could have made the correction and, and called it, but none of us did, so it was a fairly significant mistake. Um, see how we're all split up and uh, can't do too much about it. So they all warp on top of me. I'm scrambled and I don't really have any support. So I am just basically go down and there's not too much I can do about it. Um, I warp off, but don't worry, I come back in my pod and, and We'll see how the rest of the fight um, turns out. The rest of them, the two drakes and the, and the Tengu that are still there, are sort of uh, not sure exactly what to go for next. They know they need to get rid of the Falcon, so they're focusing on that. But after that, um, not really sure. I suggest T3BC is not really knowing how the positioning is on grid, but it turns out to be not really that good even though they just you know go with my suggestion and try to shoot some T3BCs, it's, it's actually a lot better for them to shoot the frigates, which are actually all over them. Um, now one note, there is there is a hawk on, on as one of the frigates, and, and these are all like sort of Calvary ships with bonuses to kinetic damage, and they all have that loaded. So they're, they're doing really minimal DPS to this hawk once they end up shooting it. But uh, that, that I guess that happens later when they're not really able to waste a lot of time shooting a hawk when it's it's not really best frigate target to go for. So they do kill some of the other frigates though. The drakes are, are, are being pressured. Um, the Tengu is, is okay at this point, but the drakes are really being pressured and being forced to warp out and come back in. And they're doing what they can. They're trying to get webs on all the frigates and, and, and take them down. Um, and uh, yeah, so you see one drake is warped out, another drake is really low shields. And the problem here, again, they're warping out, 
and they're coming back to a warp in who's burning in a completely different direction from where they've warped. If they had warped out in the same direction and they'd come back, they would have landed maybe by the time he's done the they've done the warp and come back, he's maybe covered fifty kilometers, they they're fifty kilometers away, he's still burning towards them, they're in a good position to support the person that they've warped back into. But warping off in random spots, you come back at range and he's moving away from you and you're in no position to support um, your gangmate. So it's, it's a huge mistake by by just doing that. And these guys, they're, they're, they live here, they're reshipping, they're coming back in, in new ships. There's another Falcon on grid. Um, more, more ships are coming in. Uh, and they're also doing something fairly smart. They've, d they've identified the direction that we're burning in, mainly the Tengu. They're warping frigates off in that direction and then warping them back to their gangmates at 100, trying to lock down this Tengu. Now, this, we, he doesn't seem like he really had too much options as far as um, places to warp, so I guess the celestial direction was fairly obvious. Even if it wasn't, it didn't, doesn't matter. They can just warp to a cluster and come back, and they'll be in the same spot. So they're coming back on top of him. Our Drake, who's trying to support him, who's on grid, is just too far, and he's burning, wasting sort of his cap, trying to get closer, and, and he's he can't really get closer because everyone's burning, and the difference in velocity isn't enough. He's not that much faster than the Tengu at all. He's even slower. So he's not going to be catching up. So it's sort of wasting his time um, trying to burn. But he's doing what he can. He's still in range of the, the rapiers, which are, are now the new, new priorities. And some of the frigates have been killed, and a few have warped off and trying to come back. But these rapiers are really the next priority. So they're going for the rapiers, and uh, they, managed, they managed to kill one. And they, they start on the second rapier. And you, you notice know, there's a lot of really dangerous ships on grid for us. There's Mikhail's who are just faster than us, do way more damage, more EHP. Um, Tornado's really good damage projection as well if, if they're not focused down quickly. Cinnables, good EHP as well, um, really fast ships. So it's really not a good situation. And to, to top it off, one of our drakes is sort of rolled right into the, the, uh, the second rape here, uh, trying to point it and not really being aware of the things that are around him. Perhaps he was zoomed in and didn't see, checking and why it's important to zoom out so you're aware of what's around you. But he's gone in too far, and uh, I've told him to just get out, warp out. It's best to, if you're so deep, to just warp out if you're not pointed rather than burn before they, and give them a chance to actually, you know, tackle you properly. The situation still seems okay at this point, but the frigates are all there's much more frigates now and a falcon as well so the combination of frigates and falcon you get tackled you get jammed and there's not people to support you then you're in a lot of trouble you notice our drake's out of position he's not close to our tengu which is sort of the where we're sort of trying to keep the focus of the gang and they're focusing on our tengu our tengu is also switched alignment to the sun which is, which is much further while these drakes our drakes are warping off the celestials that are not in that direction and coming back at range and they're not they're not in the correct position to be able to support him. Again, like I guess just reiterating it, just keep sort of making the same mistakes over. We, we are still killing stuff, but um, we're not being as effective as we could be, perhaps. So the stiletto tackles the Tengu. Falcon, everything's warping to them now because we've just stretched the grid, the engagement so far, that there's a lot of ways to get to where you need to go, just warping to Rex and then the closest person to our Tengu. Um, they have the Tengu tackled, the Falcon is jamming the Tengu, our support has come back. Um, our, our Drake actually picked a good spot to warp out to and come back, but it, it's too late. The Tengu, I guess the Stiletto possibly had a web, and the Tengu goes down, unfortunately. I tell the second Drake that had warped off not, not to bother coming back, because sort of the, we can't really keep fighting anymore. We've lost too much. The Trinado and the Tengu are gone. Uh, Drakes are all burned out mods, or heavily burned mods, he heated mods and no drones and everything, so it's a bad situation, we can't keep engaging, and they just keep getting more and more from the station and reinforcements, they live in this system. So um, we should have disengaged, um, sort of committed too much, or over ourselves, and um, we end up losing the first strike as well, as the Tengu and the Tornado. Um, despite all of that, we don't do too badly, we uh, actually end up killing uh, Kedden, Falcon, Cinnabol, Demos, Rapier, Hound, Jaguar, Ares, Naga, Maldiction, about 10 ships, and we lose 3 of our ships, and 
for the amount that they had and what we had. It's it's still pretty good. It's not bad. But um, again, um, a lot of things we can take away, some mistakes that we made that we could have um, really avoided and, and increased our effectiveness if, if we uh, had sort of paid more attention to our, our positioning and, and what we used as an alignment. Um, and yeah.